Good morning, everybody. It's the first weekend of September and Labor Day weekend and all that. And uh, we are going to talk about a few things. Of course, uh, many of you have asked and I appreciate all your support. And uh, because I got a lot of comments and a lot of messages and a lot of love from all of you and I can only thank you a lot um, as the ones of you who follow me know um, whisper is at the rainbow bridge and um, I didn't want to talk for a while uh, about it because it all happened on August 17th but I didn't want to talk for a while. Hi, Anna. Because I wasn't sure if I would be able to keep my composure, you know, not just burst out crying. Hi, Ellen. Uh, that's why I waited to get a little bit more out of it. Um, what can I tell you? He's, he had started going downhill a lot in the last month. And then, uh, hi Donna, in the last week, uh, he barely ate anything and he was kind of wobbly and all that. And it was obvious that he was starting to get into organ failure. And, uh, and for liver cancer in dogs is quite nasty. I mean, besides confusion, they can get into seizures and, you know, a lot of vomiting and bloody diarrhea and all that and I didn't want to get to that um, so I I took him to the vet and the vet was wonderful he passed so 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 peacefully practically I was holding him like this and he had his little head on my right arm and uh, that is how how he fell asleep you know forever Hi Maria, and sorry I got something in my and um, it took a couple weeks almost now to get his ashes back because apparently hi Judy because apparently the pet crematorium um, due to the pandemic only works two days a week so they were fairly backlogged but it was very nice they sent him back in a nice a wooden box, you know, with a little card there, and then they also uh, took his paw print and his nose print and sent those to me as well. So, um, yeah, the cats, I have no idea what's going on with my right eye. The cats, um, I was elated that they didn't seem to be that distressed. Hi, Beth. Um, what the freaking heck? <laughs> Pardon my French. Uh, but, um, the truth is that in the last month he didn't, uh, interact with them as he usually did. So, probably, and they also felt that he was going down. One thing I can tell you is that, uh, the cats are way more loving now and as a friend said probably because they didn't have um, as much time because most of my time was going to to whisper but uh, anyway the way that I got out of it especially it was hard because whisper was like a real child for me and because he required so much work I think I told you before that I got him from a, an animal sanctuary and he had been severely abused before. Uh, he was an owner surrender. The owner was uh, an old guy in a wheelchair. Why would someone in a wheelchair want a racing dog? Beats me. And um, he had never been outside. His paw pads were like a baby's butt, so soft. But the guy had a son who was a bum, 
and who would bring, uh, come over and bring his pit bull puppy and use a uh, whisper as bait to teach his pit bull pu puppy how, s how to fight. That's unfortunately in Oklahoma they are still illegal dog fights. Hi Jots! Um, but anyway, so it took a long time. Hi Natalia! It took a long rehabilitation for him. I called him Whisper because, well, with Whippets, number one, there's an unwritten rule that Whippets names have to start with W, H, and if possible, I. But initially I saw that he was debarked because for a very, very long time he didn't bark at all. He would only sigh. And uh, it took almost six months before he first uh, wagged his tail. So, for years and years and years after, whenever I would see him wagging his tail, it just filled my heart with happiness. But uh, anyway, um, the way I got out of it is, uh, number one, I knew that in my heart, I knew that I, I did the best I could to keep him alive for a long time, because if you think it was more than two and a half years from the time he was diagnosed and uh, he didn't really live anymore he was just existing and it was very hard for him even to walk and uh, that's what made me kind of get out of it you know <sighs> but um, anyway I've been slowly slowly coming out of it on one hand it took me less than I was expecting and on the other hand it took me more if that makes any sense um, less because I was so involved thank you Maria I was so involved with him and um, it was like a struggle a daily struggle to to keep him alive and happy but uh, on the other hand it took me shorter than I thought um, I mean it took me shorter and longer <laughs> okay and on the other hand um, there's a lot of a silver lining I don't know how to to put it otherwise because number one um, I have a whole chunk of budget now that before was for Whisper, for his food, for his supplements, for everything um, that now I can use more for myself and uh, I went back on, uh, I restarted the Atkins to help because now that I'm on thyroid medication I can uh, try the Atkins again but I couldn't because of Whisper. Uh, and I have a ton of chicken to eat <laughs> because not long before he started going down I had bought because I used to buy these long big uh, chicken breast trays so at the time he died I had like 13 of them in my freezer so I've been eating chicken and I'm gonna still be eating chicken a, a, long, a long time uh, but then you know, I'm slowly realizing how much taking care of him was sapping my energy. Uh, because before I would wake up at between 4 and 4.30 to let him out. And by the time he would go out, I also had to give him something to eat. Because of his condition, he had to uh, be fed when he was hungry. Otherwise, he would start... Uh, throwing up and and all that and by the time I was done with them I couldn't go back to sleep now I still wake up at 4 4 30 but I'm able to go back to bed then I don't have to be careful and every two hours let him out to uh, feed him hi Joe and uh, it's it's less a lot of stress is gone so it's been like a balancing like less stress but grieving and slowly slowly the less stress starts gaining and uh, yeah I wasn't able to do much in terms of creation or anything 
but as I said, and besides, I have the the cats that are really, really helping with this. I mean, I know that many of you have gone through the pain of having to put your fur babies to sleep, and it's something that I call a heartbreaking kindness. And the thing is that uh, I had to put dogs and cats to sleep before, and after the last one, not the last one, the uh, Thor, because I had back in 2007, I had a, uh, hi Chris, I had a beautiful gentle giant who was uh, half Newfoundland and half uh, Great Dane. I mean, he was huge and beautiful and gentle and everything, and he got bone cancer, a very severe and very fast advancing. And um, after that happened, I swore to myself that I'm not going to try to keep them alive for me, you know. And um, after that, I had Maya that had to be put to sleep in 2016, but with Maya, I didn't try. I mean, one morning, he, she just, her uh, back end paralyzed. And... Uh, I said, I'm not going to, to even try. And then it was whisper. Mm, but, um, yeah, it is it is heartbreaking. And it is something with Thor. It took me close to two years before I was able to watch a movie without bursting up in tears. Because in the last two days before um, I took him to the vet, uh, his uh, bone cancer was at the end of the femur, you know, I mean, there was no bone anymore, there was a tumor. So, um, in the last two days, I just pulled in the living room a uh, futon mattress, and I had friends bring me movies, and all I did was just lay down on that mattress with him watching movies, but... As I said, for two years after, I wasn't able to watch movies for more than five minutes before bursting into tears. So it took a, it took a while. Um, but with Whisper, as I said, I feel... Of course I felt guilty. Because no matter how, it is, how much it is, no matter how much they suffer, no matter... You will still feel like you killed them. I mean, that's something that is only normal. But uh, the guilt with Whisper was much less because he was the way he was and because I knew that I fought for so long to, to keep him alive. I mean, remember, I would be during lives and I would say, I'm sorry, I have to pause because I have to let Whisper out. And um, I know his little spirit is back in the house. Probably took him a while to follow his ashes. <laughs> Because uh, starting two or three days ago, I kind of feel him. You know how he was coming and just looking at me. I kind of feel him. It's always on the right side, you know. And when I turn, the, turn my head, he's not there. But it's like I see him with the corner of my eyes. Of course, so I might be just hallucinating. But <laughs> I don't know. I feel he's there. Okay. Um, now... There is one thing that I wanted to, to talk to you about, and it's the the whole thing. <laughs> yes, the Wonder Cat. <laughs> Finnegan the Wonder Cat. Uh, the whole thing is about depression, because um, I've been getting a lot of messages about that. Uh, because, on uh, of course, it's hard for, on ev everybody, right? The, what's happening all over the world uh, is affecting everybody and uh, depression wise um, the the cases of depression have increased the suicide rate has increased and for the one of us who are elderly and have some kind of disability even if the disability is just being elderly um, it's even harsher 
on one hand. On the other hand, I think that we might have been less affected because we were already fairly hermity, I don't know how to say it, I mean, um, just being in the house by ourselves and not going out much and but it's one thing you see how the the human mind is weird it's one thing to do it out of your own will and another thing when you have to kind of makes you feel confined and then the the other thing is the the human interaction and all of us lack human interaction and what can you do about it um now I'm talking from the point of view of somebody who doesn't really get depressed so it's gonna be a little bit hard because um, in all my life I was depressed only twice once was an existential crisis when I was in college and uh, the second time was when I started having chronic pain and it took forever I had to go through all the hoops to finally get it taken care of and you know when you're in pain 24 7 it brings you down you know so uh, if you don't mind I'm gonna start my massager there we go so I can sit on the chair for longer without saying okay I need to go my back hurts um, but what can we do about it? Um, I'm going to tell you what helps me. And as I said, I don't have depression. I might have from time to time mild depression states. Yes, creativity is really good. But I talked a lot about uh, how much creativity and nurturing helps with depression. Now, I want to get because it's a, a it's a step further what we are going through and give you some of my tips one of the things that always helps me is cleaning cleaning and organizing then why does that help because um, the type of depression that's settling in right now <coughs> is due to events that we do not have control over and events that we do not have control over uh, are much harder to handle if you want it's almost like a type of grieving but doing activities that make you take control of stuff really really help so let's say make a list of the stuff that you need to do around the house and then simply start organizing and cleaning you don't have to do it all day but make a point of doing it at least once a day even if it is for just 10 minutes uh and that uh, helps i usually do another thing you know i kind of substitute and when i clean stuff and my OCD kicks in because I just love to clean stuff that you know like when stuff that I find in antique stores and needs a lot is kind of caked from being antique -y. I love to clean stuff and make it all nice and sparkly and shiny but um, uh, in terms of you know energy and things try to imagine that when you're cleaning and when you're organizing you actually do that in your life and in your body like make a let's say vacuuming the house make it into a removing negative energy i mean try to visualize like you have all little dots of bad stuff all over the carpet and then you vacuum it and then you take it out um a visualization in this case increases your sense of taking control of your life of course it's a very small thing of course there are things that we cannot have control o over I mean for goodness sakes we are in a pandemic 
right? It's not like you can control a pandemic, but uh, it's little things like this that help you. Uh, another thing is to try a pam to pamper a little bit yourself a little bit even if it is just tiny tiny things like having something to eat that you really really like um, even if you're on a low income kind of like me <laughs> make a point for at least once a month to get something that you really like to eat or drink splurge um, and then you can look forward for the splurge next month it's it's something great or get yourself and don't go for cosmetics or perfumes or or things go for things that would make you would help you relax like um an aromatherapy bath salt and take a nice uh, a bath or an aromatherapy incense or candle and um, try to find there are so many relaxing music and sounds uh, videos on YouTube and just you need to get in a happy place and by happy place I don't mean I'm gonna think of when I was happy when I was younger and I went to the beach and I'm gonna try to be no that is not a good uh, happy place because it comes together with the sadness and the frustration that you will not be able to do that again um, I think instead of it's peaceful it's just me it smells nice I'm laying in my house and I am so happy and content just in this little moment let other things bother me after this but just in this little moment this is my bubble of happiness and don't let it uh, don't let anything bother it if you start getting all kinds of bad thoughts so what if I need to go to the doctor what if something will happen or just don't let any of those thoughts just try to feel happy and content within yourself um, that helps a lot with your well-being and it doesn't seem like a lot but if you try and do one of these things you know like every day and or every so often slowly slowly it will build up and it will make you feel a little bit better about yourself and about everything that's been going on and and all that it's in a way it is a little bit of self-empowering but um, it's not really because it's not one of those exercises of make you um, your self-esteem esteem grow or make yourself feel more empowered or no it's more like taking a step back if you want and almost like looking at everything from outside you know without being affected because if you manage to do that at least once in a while as I said for 10 minutes for 5 minutes for 10 minutes for 15 minutes you will feel much uh, better because otherwise with everything that's been going on I am sure that everybody who is has some kind of disability or is elderly um, lately have felt some of their whatever ailment they have uh, so the symptoms get worse their sleep has been disturbed they have moments of sadness they have moments of despair that they have moments I mean once you get past a certain age you already have the you know, I'm at the end of my, my life kind of thought even if we don't admit it in front of others but the thoughts are there um, but and then if you put on top of it the 
everything that's going on it's all that kind of negative energy and not necessarily negative thinking but um more like despair thinking and it kind of takes over you and you know that the mind has a lot of power over the body so it helps you kind of get rid of those and um and that is a uh, uh, there are some good i mean as i said they work for me and i honestly think that uh, this might be because i've been like that all my life and this might be one of the reasons why it's not easy for me to get depressed and i'm talking i'm not talking about you know because anybody will get depressed after somebody somebody dear to them dies or after a divorce or after losing their job i mean there is a short period that kind of it's like the, the grieving thing i mean that is completely normal i'm talking about functional uh depression uh the one when you completely lose interest in life and is not medically caused because there are people who are depressed because there is a uh, chemical imb imbalance in their brain it's nothing they can do about it they need to get treatment about that even if i personally think that it's a little bit over treated and they could just address the imbalance instead of you know address the cause not the effect as i still remember <laughs> when i was going through breast cancer treatment was like at almost at every darn doctor's appointment I had and there was a time when I had two or three doctor's appointments a week they would always try to prescribe me depressants antidepressants just like why well cuz you must be depressed going to well yeah I'm a little bit down I mean heck I had cancer it's but why would i take the, oh it's going to help you get easier over will they make the whole thing go away no then why would i take them it's something that is life and i have to face it and i have to deal with it with you know when your house is on fire you don't go and get drunk you try to put the fire out um but anyway so i hope that uh this might help you it's just a little bit of of stuff to do but a little bit today and a little bit tomorrow and a little bit tomorrow it's going to help you i promise you all your all you have to do is to just keep doing it okay the other thing that i was hoping to be able to talk about maybe i'll we'll do tomorrow but anyway um in case you weren't aware scalpy has um uh, come up with some new primo colors let me show them to you Uh, and on some of them they are already out uh, Trish doesn't have yet the new colors but uh, okay it's copy primo just a second I'll I'll show them to you in a second okay so number one they have the iridescent multi-pack As you can see there are three colors uh, what it looks to me it's like the mica granulation is a little bit too large it makes me think of um, a certain glamour was years ago but it looks richer than that and uh, but of course i'll have to see it and then uh, they have a new metallics that i also ordered and i was hoping that they would come today but apparently they won't be here until tomorrow uh, the metallics are actually six colors 
and they periodically run out so n it didn't hit all the suppliers so and then they also have the pastel which honestly I didn't order because I mean, I can make these colors. Why do I have to buy an extra? The price seems to be... Hold on, let me try it. Please. So, it's uh, 6 ounces. So, what the heck did I do? I messed up. Hold on. I messed up. <laughs> Uh, the price seems to be okay. Oh, I know what I did. That's what I did. No. And let's go back to Primo. Where's Primo? Primo. Uh, the price seems to be fairly okay, considering that a uh, regular pack is two ounces, and this one you have six ounces. Uh, 899 it's divided by three it's almost three dollars is a pinch more expensive than the the other ones but um, as you can see they change the you have a lot of multi packs with mixed effects and all that but then they also have let me they have new colors in the liquids and these trees is going to get uh she said that she should be putting them let's actually check if she did because she emailed me a couple days ago to say that uh, she was getting she just got them and was getting ready to put them on the website I guess she didn't get around to do that yet. Um, but they have uh, new colors like translucent turquoise, um, the conf confetti glitter clear, uh, garnet metallic, navy metallic, the peacock pearl, they already had it. Uh, grayish granite. And they come <coughs> in multi-packs. As I said, I'm going to order the new colors, but I wasn't very, with the regular metallics, I wasn't very impressed because they weren't very, very shiny. The trick is that for all the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, for the textures, for you know like this kind of textures remember i tried with other liquid clays and it did not work as good so um i would think that it's a completely different um, recipe that they have there then the other thing that they have they have new silk screens and i did order a few of these because remember before they only had the the regular big one the price seems to have increased because i remember that the kit was only like 14 bucks or something and now it's 19.99 so i guess everybody remembers this one but now they have a few more they have the floral and then the nature And uh, these round things are a little bit different than the other ones. And you see you have a large one as well. And then the nature. Come on, show them to me. Again, you have them in the rounds. And I really love this ginkgo. S looks very much like Helen Braille's texture. This looks like um, butterfly but i promise you we'll do some pretty tutorials with that and then they have 
uh, some kits that are really neat. So they have the embellishment jewelry, Mokumegane, the bead making they had, but they have the mandala. It's a complete set. Come on. And I did, remember, I did fairly recently the uh, four amber stuff. But they have some, give me just a second, they have a, a wine, entertaining, and what the heck is that? There was one more, and I don't see it anymore. Maybe they ran out. They have the embellishments, of course. And as you can see, they have these ones, and I, I did use them a little bit. Honestly, I like them better in um, uh, with resin, not with polymer clay. Polymer clay still feels a little bit, I don't know how to say, a little bit um, plasticky, rubbery stuff. So as you can see, translucent turquoise, translucent amber, garnet metallic, navy metallic. I know the peacock pearl, pearl was, uh, and they have, okay, so this was oven save, save, the 3D jewelry. So as you can see, you can make little uh, 3D stuff. But, anyway let me get back to this okay so hi silver okay so that would be one of the things um, and I think I'm going to make it in a in a different um, I'm, I'm I need to talk to you but I'm, I think I'm going to gather more information and then Guess we'll have to have another talk about um, copying other artists, but not only what screen. I did show the screen, what screen. I don't know what, what screen you're talking about. <laughs> And as I said, all these products, I was hoping they were they would come today, but it shows that they will be coming tomorrow. So hopefully they'll come before the live tomorrow and I'll be able to to show you. Um, but as I was saying, I want to talk uh, to you about again about copying between artists, but I don't know how to tell you what would constitute ha copying and also a little bit of ethics and good manners if you want because one thing that um, one thing I'm going to tell you before we start into that now I've been seeing that everybody's all up in arms about which channel is the best because they have a better social blade rank well unless you are a channel that is hi joanne unless you are a channel that is that was created on purpose to go viral and to make a shitload of money out of ads and nothing else you don't really care about social blade um, a lot of people regard social blade like some kind of standing and uh, proof of success uh, it's not really I know channels that have 
less than 10,000 subscribers some of them have even less than 5,000 subscribers and make more than six figure incomes a month because they are very niched and they don't do it through ads they do it through affiliates and through uh, patreon type models so don't go necessarily about this youtube polymer clay tutorial maker is the best because they have a high social blade ranking if you look at the established polymer clay artists they don't have a high social blade ranking because they don't care their income and their energy is not focused on having a high youtube social blade ranking you know uh they are active in other things a lot of the artists and creators have started pulling away from youtube uh for close to two years now because the whole youtube algorithm and the whole youtube system is not that good anymore is not helping creators as much and there are other websites and a lot of artists have uh, preferred to uh, do their own websites and only do a little bit of marketing mostly through facebook and uh, twitter and uh, instagram and and stuff but not so much on youtube because there have been so many issues with youtube and it's very constricting and it doesn't really protect creators from anything so that's one thing that i wanted to explain to you that a uh, social blade ranking doesn't mean much as i said unless you're someone like pewdiepie who has millions and millions of subscribers and makes millions from advertising money but especially when you have especially when you have channels who do not do uh, do not have their channel monetized not monetizing a channel automatically decreases your social blade ranking social blade is for channels that monetize it uh, it focuses on how many subscribers you have how many views you have and how much money you make from ads uh, it will still say for a channel that's not monetized that they might make so much a month but it's a might they don't and that decreases yes we did because there's been some more stuff happening again and you know i had my own issues to deal with and i got really miffed that i had to be interrupted by people starting to post crap about one artist in the pages of other artists on talking bs you know when there's nothing happening and that's why i said i'm going to 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 do a special edition of talk about this and about what constitutes um ethics and what constitutes copying because yes there are a lot of things that are the same because for example the watercolor technique no artist nowadays came up with it it was invented by maggi maggio in the late 1980s there are newcomers who have no freaking idea about it and if they say they become because you have nowadays uh because of the social networking you have a special category of groupies like there were groupies before with the uh, rock bands now you have them with various creators and goodness they don't know much about the subject but goodness forbids that they see another artist doing the same technique as this artist even if the technique is 50 years old okay it's not really 50 it's like 40 something uh they're oh how dare you you copied then the other thing is 
We have freaking cutters. Everybody buys these cutters. So just because somebody used the same type of cutter doesn't mean that they copy. Okay, because this is what happens when you use the same type of cutter or when you use the same type of technique. Um, besides, those most of those things are from books. They are not everybody, not all artists who have published books have a YouTube channel or a Facebook uh, page where they put video tutorials because it's much easier to see to watch you know youtube tutorials and the books cost money most of the newcomers have no idea about what's in those books only the older artists know you know the whole history and who did this and who did that and who did the other thing um and then they start running their mouths and accusing oh you copied no it's that person who made an old technique but didn't peep at all that it's an old technique you know and that they and they allow novices to believe that they came up with whatever it is and this makes a lot of um starts a lot of arguments and a lot of bad blood in the various uh, groups and pages and which is something I don't understand. I mean, I'm sorry, this is a pet peeve of mine. Why the heck do we have so many groups? And it's one reason why I'm not into groups. I mean, I would waste all my time into groups, but why do we need several thousand groups? And every group, and I noticed any group that, uh, and I've been a forum and website and forum moderator for ages. Anytime an online group gets past let's say 40 people you get lost there's too much stuff there and if it's not properly organized this is why a facebook group is not good because on a facebook group you cannot organize the discussion in the old style forums you have threads you have boards you have threads you can go and you can check only what interests you but in the format that facebook has for groups um you get lost and because there's not too much to learn from them or to exchange information about it's just people practically posting what they make um advertising their tutorials and then the group is attacking this i mean why the heck do you need to do that we have one freaking life Spend it with something, doing something creative. Check first who you're talking to. Check first where the whole thing is coming from. Just because somebody has a social bay blade status doesn't make them the belly button of the universe. Okay? That's, I mean, I mean that's why I said I was so upset because I was dealing with all my, my grief and my pain and my all that and then somehow i got thrown in the oh you need to arbitrate this no i don't leave me alone <laughs> but that's why i wanted to clarify uh, a few points and um, when that happens and you get all kinds of stuff my advice is make the whole thing public if it's in private groups that do nothing else but backstab others just make the whole screenshot make it public because with this kind of bullies having private conversations doesn't help it comes down to a he said she said and there's no nothing but this kind of virtual bullies hate to be brought to light they like to scurry back you know in there they they come up and they bite and then they scurry back so if they are brought out to light, that's when they will stop. So do not uh, encourage this type of behavior. We are all artists here and we make tutorials. That means that if we put out a tutorial, 
Yes, I know. But see, you're talking here about a different thing, Barbara. There's a de design is automatically copyrighted. And when you put out a tutorial, you pretty much automatically grant the permission for that person to do stuff like that. But unless the express permission is given, you cannot do stuff like that to sell it. Or without whatever that specific artist uh, says. If you know that um, the end of all my tutorials, I say I grant you, give you permission to use the techniques and the designs presented in this tutorial. Just do not get the tutorial and say it's yours. Um, but uh, you can open, uh, they don't realize that they can open themselves to uh, to actual lawsuits. But what I was, to get back to what I was talking, um, don't encourage, start looking before you start attacking, before you start looking exactly what the whole thing is about. Because I know that myself, you know, and it was actually ridiculous when I did three years ago uh, uh, the watercolor torn paper technique tutorial. I posted that the, this is how the tutorial begins. This is how the video begins. The torn paper letter named, later named, I think that this is how I said, uh, the watercolor technique was invented by the artist Maggi Maggio in the late 1980s. Um, and uh, I had a lot of people who, you know, how dare you copy so and so, this is her technique. I'm like, did you even freaking watch the video? I mean, what the heck? And the same with the, uh, you know, with other things. Like I, I, I had to start, and actually, this is how I started the tutorial when I was showing the hidden magic. Actually, got the magazine in which it was for the first time presented. And I think it was like 1980 something. No, 1990 some 1992 maybe and I showed the magazine it was presented and still people are like oh you copied so and so you freaking crazy I just showed you how it shows in the magazine to do it what is my advice to tweak a thing because you might it might not come perfectly if you do it exactly like in the magazine and then I put my own twist on it no I mean don't encourage these people and when they start doing like that bring them to the light you know how when you go in a house full of cockroaches and you turn out the light how they all scurry because this is the only way uh that you can get rid it's a plague it's a plague now don't get me wrong i'm not saying that there are not some artists who actually do copy there are but that's not what i want to talk about uh, I want to talk about people who have no idea what the heck they are talking about, but they make life hell for s some artists who actually take their time and their, you know, knowledge and offer it to you all to learn. Because, think about it. Yes, there are some artists who only come up with tutorials and with presentations because they want to sell their own uh, creation or products. or, And that's normal. I mean, there's nothing shameful about. But uh, most tutorial creators, most tutorial artists, they do so out of the desire of sharing their knowledge. And it's quite easy to see who is who because the the ones who are out for knowledge and stuff you'll notice they even forget to tell you hey don't forget to like and subscribe and you can find this uh, for purchase on my website and you know but they will kind of suffocate you with that but um, 
people who are out the genuine intention to share what they know um, they usually forget about that I'm not saying that they won't mention it at all but usually they forget about that and um, especially getting back to what I was talking before especially in a time like this it is something that takes at us out of the funk that we are in. It's a way of interacting in being socialized because that is one of the main reasons why we are in the funk we are in because humans are social creatures. If you separate a human from the rest of the society, they will suffer. And this type of tutorials, this type of make you feel closer to others. Now, I know I have over 17,000 subscribers. I Obviously, I don't know all of them. Obviously, I know most of you who come in the live chat and say something or who come on uh, Facebook and send me messages or comment on Facebook and stuff. But there's thousands and thousands and thousands of you that I don't know. Nevertheless, my subscribers feel that I'm a friend because there's this connection, you know. No, it wasn't about me, Joanne. It was about somebody else, but somehow I was chosen as an arbiter. Um, but think about this. How much joy in your life artists bring and tutorial makers bring and because you feel that you have a new friend and you can make new friends there are so many I, I I could probably tell you several dozens of examples that uh, through my live chat and through my Facebook page and through my YouTube there are so many times that people connected because I had posted something and people connected and were able to establish a friendship and they were people were able to help each other or myself I found out about somebody who needed help and if I could I helped them if I couldn't I found somebody else who could help them I mean it's a it's a blessing to have something like this in our lives do not dirty it, okay? Because this is not why we are doing this. And this is not why. I mean, yeah, I could be like others. For example, I'm going to put myself on a pedestal. I, I could be like others and post all the time. Oh, look what I did and look at it. See, I have, oh my God, look at it. Look, look, oh, 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 oh. And I've made this and I made this and I made this and remember what I did. No, because that's not why I am. And there are a lot of artists like me. Um, they don't care about, you should do, you know, all the, if you want your channel to be successful, you need to post so many videos and you need, if you want your Facebook page to be, you need to post so many things every day and you need to do this every day. We don't cra care. You know, we are not there for that. You know, we don't seek uh, admiration and we don't seek worshipping and we don't seek this and that <laughs> thank you Anna so don't dirty this don't taint what we are giving you out of love okay don't think that just because somebody has a higher social brain rank and when you watch their videos you have like five different advertisements means they are a better person and a better artist that somebody who doesn't really care they'll just go up and show you stuff and talk to you so that's my i'm down from the soapbox now <laughs> um and yeah, I, I saw my doctor, and the, the thing that I didn't uh, tell you about, um, 
because I usually talk about my health too, but I, it was too much whispered to talk about and I didn't say anything about my health. Uh, so I finally had to go to see my primary care because I had to do some uh, blood work that was absolutely necessary. And um, I am switching to medi medicinal cannabis from opiates. And also, I'm going to have to see a neurologist and a neurosurgeon because they want to check, to do more checkups, and then I have to do a sleep study. And then I might be prescribed a, a some stimulant, I don't know, like modafinil or something. It all depends on what they find. Uh, to see exactly um, what is going on and what is causing this fatigue that I have because finally I guess I had some issues in my blood and in some stuff and they started studying oh she has this oh and she has this symptom and she has so what if it's something else well, we're gonna check that so even if I'm not very happy that I'll have to go uh, see these doctors in person and I'll have to do an MRI so hopefully things will be good I wish I lived in Vermont because they are number one in no cases in low uh, low COVID-19 cases and deaths but unfortunately I'm in Oklahoma and I think we are well over 50,000 total and we have an average of a thousand new cases a day but hopefully with my new if you <laughs> if you follow me on Facebook you saw I have this respirator that makes me look like the predator guy it's like and it somehow it it presses here and it makes my eye go like this because it's got a very good seal but I can breathe properly with it and it's got uh, changeable you can change the filters carbon filters so it's really good um, about you know how much it can filter so anyway forgive the ranting <laughs> and I shall see you tomorrow tomorrow we are going to make little kawaii witches and we might gonna make earrings with them and I hope you like it because of course it's and yeah I, I am right now working on Halloween uh, tutorials and um, I should be posting because this past week I was able to work you know on stuff before that the only thing I was able to do was clean the house and I clean the house and I clean the house and I clean the house to get out of the funk with whisper um, but anyway, I shall see you all uh, tomorrow and we will make cute little witches and I'm thinking, I don't know what hair, we might make several with different colors of hair so they would look all cute, okay? And uh, uh, I promise you they will be not hard to make so they should be beginner uh, level so we won't have problems. So I shall see you tomorrow at uh, 12.30 Central and if you just found my channel don't forget to like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> see you all tomorrow. Love you all. Have a wonderful weekend and Labor Day. Goodbye.